with the today's session. So if you remember last class, we started with the assemblers and uh, few aspects of the assemblers we learned that it worked in two passes, uh, right? And uh, we shall continue from uh, there today, okay? Uh, as a quick recap, As a quick re recap, we just uh, gone through the assemblers. What is it? And uh, two passes of the assemblers. And we shall go for the implementation of the two pass assemblers too. Right? Okay. Uh, assembler takes the assembly level language program using the machine uh, instruction set and the addressing mode. It converts it to the object. That's the task of all of assemblers. And assemblers, uh, assembly language program will contain two types, three types of two statements. One is imperative statements, which are action specifying statements, and uh, which is actually the instructions that executes. And the next type of statement is uh, declarative statements, so which reserves the space needed for the declarations of the variables and constants, whatever we teach. And uh, third type of statements are assembler directives which are the guidelines to the assembler itself about how to assemble the program this we have seen and uh, any assembly language instruction will have three parts label genomics operates after assembly the labels and the operands will be con con converted into addresses if the operands are constants it will be converted into values genomics will be converted into opcode this much i think we have did so the simple SIC assembler will going to perform the following five functions. What are the functions? Is it converts the genomics to opcode, symbolic operands to addresses, and uh, constants into its equivalent values or representations, and uh, resolve the assembler directives, means uh, gives the uh, guidelines to your assembler about how, where to start, where to end, what to do, and all those things. And finally, the write the object code into assembly using a separate file. These are the tasks of the simple SIC assembler. As we have seen that there are two passes of the assembler. Pass 1 is called as definition pass, wherein addresses is assigned to all the statements in the program and even the declarative statements as well as the assembler directives. And some assembler directives will be processed, something like start and end. And uh, it is going to be defining the addresses for all the statements that's what it, that's what it is as popular pass one pass one doesn't do any conversion or any translation but the pass two is called as a translation pass of the assembler wherein all the uh, instructions or the uh, instructions imperative statements will be converted into its opcode and data values for the constants and all the operands other uh, variables will be converted into addresses this is what is the task what your pass two will do now we shall see the data structure and the algorithm for doing this and in this sense we are going to see how we shall assemble a sic program and a sic exe program that's what is the next task okay so but assembling an sic program is quite an easy task because we do have only two addressing modes and only one data form is 24 bits means instruction is of 24 bits and we have direct or indexed only two others so using this how to assemble the things that's what we're going to learn step by step and usually the problems in the examination will be given a code and you are supposed to convert it into object code and write in the object code file format that's what's the task so first thing what you should you people should know is the differentiation between SIC program and SIC exe program, which we have seen. SIC program also we have written, and SIC exe program also we have written. But you should become fluent of able to identify the differentiation. And in SIC exe program, you should be capable of identifying format 2, format 3, and format 4 instructions and do the assembling accordingly. Right? We should go, we should go step by step taking a program as an example and that will make us more confident about how to assemble the things. Before that we shall start with the data structures that is used in assemblers. We use three data structures. One is called SIMPAP, symbol table. Second one is OPAP, opcode table. And the third one is an integer. We call it as location component. As we shall have a look at each of them. 
first one we shall see about the op core table that is called as op tab op tab contains op code for each instruction set and all the op codes is written in hexadecimal form all the op codes are written in hexadecimal form right during pass one we are going to check this particular op code table to identify whether it's a valid instruction or not we have written some instruction something like not you have written not instruction is not there in sic or sicx so during pass one when we are assigning the addresses for the instructions we are looking to opt for is it a valid instruction? if it is valid we should have a appropriate opt for that that will be looked upon during pass two this will be used or portable will be used to convert the instruction or monomic into a monomic into a port right so we will replace the monomic by its entry hexadecimal entry whatever is present in the up port table third one is is a static read only table because instruction set of each machine is fixed so you cannot add some instruction or you cannot remove some instruction so it's a read only and it is organized in the form of hash table right so uh, so that we can search very quickly so the uh, search will not uh, take much time in uh, sic because uh, we have very few instructions sic and sic right second uh, this is a, a picture i think i have shared with you people already this one this shows the op code table for sic machine so you can see data transfer instructions we have then arithmetic instruction logical branch as well as io instructions all these things are added. for example a test device td is having e0 that's the output further similarly we have a, a, a subtract sub instruction which is having 1c which is the output so like that way for every instruction we have the output written in hexadecimal similarly we have for sic xe also SIC XE is all having much more instruction because we also have register to register operation. So some more instructions in uh, logical, some more instruction in uh, what we call uh, data transfer. And all these things are there. So every every instruction is having its own opcode written in hexadecimal form, right? Okay. So this is uh, for the reference. When while we are assembling, we'll use this opcode table for referring this. So I should in past two okay yeah we will proceed further symbol table symbol table as we all know is populated during pass one of the assembly means all the user defined symbols which are appearing towards the left hand side of the code will be given an address and that address along with the type of that particular symbol will be entered into a table called as symbol table that's what uh, symbol table mentions. Symbol table contains all user defined symbols and its addresses. This will be popular during pass one, entry is made. During pass two, we're going to look up. Yes, because we need to convert or assign the addresses for all the operands or all the user defined symbols on RHS of the instruction, where it means the way the operand is getting used, there the same address is supposed to be mentioned. For that reason, during pass two, we're going to be using is to refer the symbols whatever is being given right symbol table is organized same as in the hash table format so that we can search quickly and the location counter location counter is a integer variable which will going to assign the addresses during pass how it happens suppose a program is given which is starting from thousand in sic and in sic and in SIC, we know that all instructions is of three bytes, that means 24 bits. So your first instruction will be assigned the address 1000. The next instruction will be assigned 1003, 1006, next instruction. Like this way, the book will go. And remember, all the addresses is also in hexadecimal, right? We should give the addresses in hexadecimal. So the location counter will be initialized when it uh, finds an assembler directive start because from there the first instruction should be given the address, right? And then after each statement it is incremented by the size of that particular uh, instruction or the declaration. The size will be same for 
for all the instructions because it is three bytes. But uh, the size will be varying if it is a declarative statement. For example, if it is an integer variable, the size is three. If it is an integer, sorry, integer constant, the size is three. If it is an integer variable, the number of variables needed into three, that will be the size. But if it is a character uh, constant, the size is one. Byte. But if it is a character variable, one into number of locations of the character unit. For example, if you have having a str, which is a string of uh, size 20, means 20 bytes will be allocated. But at the same time, if you have an array, integer array of uh, uh, 10 locations, you will be allocating 10 into 3, that is 30 bytes. So this is the task of your location code. So theoretically, this is a thing, but we can see it in action when we do the assembly. Fine shoes. Fine. So every label on uh, left hand side is entered into silver code. Because whatever is uh, appearing towards the left hand side, either it will be a label or either it will be a declaration of a variable or constant. So we should make the entry into the silver code. Right? This is the task of three data structures. One of the important and usually asked question is this. What are the data structures that is used with uh, what do you call uh, two pass assemblers? So, a code table, symbol table, location code. Two tables and one integer. Fine. This is what is the way it is being done. Fine. Let's proceed further. This is the pass one algorithm. So, usually in the question paper, majority of the times they have asked for you to write the what do you call uh, pass one or pass two uh, algorithm for two pass assemblers. Usually many, many times pass one is asked. That's what is it. So if you don't remember it exactly as it is, if you have an understanding of the uh, algorithm, you can write it in your own words or you can make it. Just have a look at the algorithm. Read the first input line if the upcode is equal to start. So in the, uh, this is the image, you can have a look at the left hand side. Uh, if the upcode is equal to start, then what you should do? You should initialize a location counter with the address. Address whatever is specified. If it is address is not specified, what you are supposed to do is you should initialize it to zeros. Because we start from zero, zero 3, 6, goes on like that. That's what is being. So within this begin and end code block, what we are uh, we are doing is save the operand as starting address. Initialize the location counter to the starting address, right line to the immediate point, intermediate file. Right? Means, see, now your assembler is going with two passes. After pass one, the output should be written into a file. On that file, the pass two of your assembler will work. Right? After the pass two, you will be getting the object that is written to a separate file, like this. So, this is what happens if the upcode is equal to start. And uh, else, you see, if the address is not specified, Initialize the location counter to zero. Okay. While opcode is not equal to end, means until you don't find an end assembler directive, should continuously be doing the rest of the things. What you will be doing? If this is not a comment line, if it is not a comment line, then it should be obviously a declaration or a assembler directive or a instruction. So for that reason, what you will do? Is there a symbol is in label field? Is there a symbol in label field? Means left hand side of your program. If yes. Then search symbol table for that label. Is it already been entered? If found, then tell that there is an error. Means the symbol is appearing twice. Right? Else make an entry into the symbol table. What you will enter? The name of the label as well as the current location counter. We are going to enter into the symbol table. Fine. This is one part of the story. If there is a symbol on the LHS. If there is no means symbol is on the LHS, either it should be a label or it should be a declaration. So only goes to then we are making that entry into the symbol table along with the address. That's it. If that is not the case, then it should be an instruction or an assembly. Let's see. Search the opt for the opcode. We found, then add three to the location counter. Why? Because it's a SIC assembler. So which is having uh, every instruction is of three bytes. So three is added. If if opcode is equal to R E S W, R E S B, or byte, then or word. 
if any of these three cases, I'm taking all these cases, LC, PLC, PLC, all these cases, then we should reserve the appropriate size. If it is a word, you're reserving three byte. If it, if it is a byte, you're reserving one byte. Apart from that, if it is RASW or RE, RASW, you are three into the size specified. If it is RASB, one into the size specified. These entries will be made. Find the length of the constant and you are put it into the, what you call, uh, is, uh, make the entry of the location call. Okay, that's all. So, we are assigning the addresses to the assembler directives, uh, declarations, labels, and all the instructions. If it is an instruction, three bytes is, three is incremented. That's all is what the password does. It is just to define the password. Means it is allocating addresses, right? This is definition phase, phase of your, what you call, uh, pass one of uh, definition phase of your assembler, right? Please remember, you don't need to by heart it. You just can remember the sequences and accordingly, you can write the algorithm, right? So first is the start. Next, after that, if any label appears, you should check in the symbol table. If it is there, it's an error. If not, you're supposed to make an entry. If it is any of the declarative statements, RASW, RASB, byte, or word, you are supposed to reserve the size accordingly. And, and uh, rest of the thing is, you are supposed to uh, write the up, after pass one, whatever the code is coming, that is supposed to be written into a intermediate file. You can see that, write line to intermediate file. That stall is what is done in the differential pass of the assembly. Pass two is a expansion or a translation phase of your assembly. In uh, pass two, we are supposed to convert all the operands into addresses, which are appearing on RHS. All the monomics is to its uh, output, and wherever it is uh, needed, we are supposed to. Uh, see this uh, addressing mode and do it. But the assembly is for and the algorithm is only for SIC. We have we don't have a separate algorithm as of this for uh, SIC XC because that makes the things too much complicated. Okay? We can see here. <coughs> ask two. Usually they will not ask you to write. Just have a look and understand. Many are times pass one assembler is asked in the question paper. Okay. Uh, yeah, pass to begin. If the opcode is equal to start, then the start writing the object code file here. It's not an intermediate file here, it's an object code file. Write the header record. What is a header record and all? We're going to discuss just after this. Okay, write the header record. And next, until if the opcode is not equal to end, you're supposed to do this. I mean, so until you don't uh, encounter the end assembly type. If this is a comment line, just ignore it. And says the opt, uh, no, opt. If it is not a comment line, right? then obviously it should be an uh, it should be an instruction. And now the declaration statements will not be there because already the declaration statements are assigned addresses and that are being eliminated. So in the intermediate part, we will not be having any of the uh, declarative statements. Okay. Yeah. If this is uh, not a comment line, then search for the opt code table. If it is found, then is there a symbol operand is there yes if it is found then store the symbol value as operand address get it from symbol table put it there if uh, else we can store zero as operand address set an error flag if you might have missed the to specify the operand in the instruction uh, and there may be uh, else store zero as operand address assemble the object code instruction so this is what is there. If the opcode is equal to byte or a word, then convert the constant into the object. You are supposed to use the value of that in your object. If the object code is not fit into the current text record of your, what do you call, file which you are writing, then you should add up the new text record. What is this text record at all? We, we can understand only when we have seen, the, we have, we'll see the, what do you call, uh, uh, file format of the object. Uh, this is the pass two of the algorithm. Mainly here the conversion is happening. Monomic is converted into uh, of course 
<laughs> and operand is converted into its address. Constant is converted into its value. Fine. Right. Now we are ready to implement the assembly. We will do it by using a program. The program is to read 10 bytes of data from the input device. We have one input device. <laughs> Every time we read, we'll get one byte. Similarly, 10 bytes I am supposed to read. What should I do? I should read a byte, store it in a character array. That is called by the name str1. We should we'll put it into str1. Like this way, we keep on doing it uh, until 10 bytes is complete. So this program uh, will give us an idea of uh, reading the input device also, a loop also, uh, all these particular things together. And also index addressing mode will come here. That's what is the advantage. Also, even that is also considered, right? Then, this is the program. This is an SIC program. And we are going for a absolute addressing. Absolute addressing, no? Not the relative addressing. I'll show you the difference also, don't worry. We have some 13 instructions, means instructions, means it includes assembly directive, all those things together. Now, program is, uh, name is called as a string, which is a label which we are using. Minomic is a start, the minomic is now an assembly directive and we are telling that you are supposed to start from the address 1000. LDX 0, we are loading LDX X register with 0. What is 0? We can see in the 12th line. We have declared zero as a word means in integer constant whose value is right now zero. That's what the zero means. Okay. Next uh, instruction TD, test device. Which device? In DEV, INDEV, in device. The in device, you can see in line number nine, we have declared it as a hexadecimal constant F5. Means we are recognizing the input device by the name F5. Right. Next. The instruction number four is telling jump equal to when test device will go to set the conditional ports either to greater less than or equal to if the conditional port set is equal to then we should go back to the instruction three that is again we should go and test as i told here we are using program controlled io program should itself check the device whether it is free or busy if it is busy if it is equal to it is busy so it should keep on repeating this until the device becomes free by breaking the condition report either greater than or less than. Yes. See the instruction number five. We are telling RD in device, read device in device. So jump equal to if this condition is true, we'll be going back to the instruction in three. If this condition becomes false, we are going for RD, read device in device. Okay. Okay. We read one byte from the input device. And the sixth instruction is telling STCH, str1, comma x means store it into string one. Where in string one, first element because your x is now loaded with the zero, right? Next instruction, tix, comma. Do you remember tix instruction increments the content of x register by one, and then makes the comparison with the specified address. Now the x x uh, x was x register was containing zero. Now it will become one, and now we are comparing with the count. Count is declared in line number eleven. You can see, count is a word. I mean, it's an integer constant whose value right now is ten. Count is a word whose value is ten. Tix has made zero to one. X register compared from zero to one. One is now compared with count. One is less than count. So, next instruction at eight is telling if it is less than Go back to in loop means read the next byte so we are repeating this for 10 times right until when until x becomes equal to 10 when x becomes equal to 10 we are going to stop uh, reading from the input device also as well as uh, writing it down to the uh, str1 also so this is the program we shall assemble this particular program that's what is the task what we'll be doing now fine First pass one. This is the password. So what it did, what we did, just have a look at this. Uh, I have not gone step by step. This we'll going to see. Pass two will go into go step, step by step. String start a thousand is been told. Now thousand is the address from where the first instruction of your program supposed to start. For that reason, you can see we have added one more column. 
that is location counter. In line number two, in row number two, you can see the LDS instruction is the first instruction of your program. Start is the assembler directive, LDS is the first instruction. So which is given the address 1000. And every instruction here is a three bytes. So for that reason, you can see the second instruction that is TD is 1003. The third instruction JEQ is 1006. Fourth instruction RD is 1009. Nine plus three in hexadecimal will become 100C. So for that reason, HTCH is given 100C. And TIX instruction is C plus three will become F. You know that in hexadecimal, we have one to nine as, is, as usual, zero to nine. After that, 10 is A, uh, 11 is B, 12 is C, 13 is uh, uh, okay, uh, D, and uh, 14 is E, 15 is F. So for that reason, C plus three will going to give you F uh, in instruction seven. And F plus three, again, will going to become 1012 and 1015, 1016, like this way. This is our location counter. Location counter is incremented every time by three bytes. Till where? Till you can see that line number nine or row number nine. Right. At row number nine, I have a declaration of our input device, which is a hexadecimal function. Whether a character constant is a hexadecimal or a character. It will be consuming one byte. So for that reason, in device byte XF5 is allocated the address 101. Go to the next one, str1, which is a character array, RESB of 10 bytes. So which is starting from the address 1016. We are not incrementing three bytes there. Please remember, we have incremented this by the size of the in device because in device is consuming only one byte. So the location counter is incremented by only one, 1015 to 1016, it is incremented by only one. Next we have str1, which is a character array of 10 bytes. So for that reason, from 1016, the next address will going to be 1026. Why? Because we are incrementing it by 10 bytes. Okay. You can see the next one is a count, which is a word means integer constant means we need only three bytes we need only three bytes it is not a character constant it is an integer constant so for that reason from 1026 to next location counter will going to be 1029 and the zero is a word which again need a three byte so but anyway the next instruction is an end so we have not considered that into consideration so this much happens in the pass one of your assembler. Every instruction is assigned with the addresses. The addresses by the size. For it, it is an instruction, as it is an SIC machine, it will be incremented by three. But if it is a declaration based on, if it is a character constant, based on the, sorry, if it is a character constant, the size of the constant will be taken there. If it is a character variable, it will going to take the size and we're going to increment. Uh, next one is, uh, this is the uh, end of our pass, one of the assignment. An important thing here is that in loop, in device, str1, count, zero, all these things along with their location counter value. For example, 1003 for in loop and uh, 1015 for in device, 1016, 1026, 1029, these are all will be entered into the symbol table, right? So the symbol table should get the symbols along with the addresses, which is used in pass two to resolve all the operands that is appearing on right hand side of your monomic. You can see that in the instruction two zero is appearing in the instruction three, uh, uh, in device is appearing in uh, instruction four, in loop is appearing on right hand side. In uh, five, you are getting in device on uh, uh, RHS in six, str1 comma x almost every instruction is using an operand so these operands on the rhs will be resolved in pass 2 means it will be replaced by the these addresses what addresses 1000 1000 1000 you know, these addresses during pass 2 and ldx dd jq all these things will be replaced by 
the hexadecimal port which is coming from our up port. The matching hexadecimal port for each of these minomics will be replaced. The matching hexadecimal address for all the operands will be replaced. That's exactly the simple way what your pass 2 of your assembler will do. Okay with this? Pass 1 just assign the addresses using location counter. Pass 2 resolves this particular thing. Fine. Shall we proceed? Okay. We shall take each instruction in how, how exactly in pass 2 this is going to be assembled. Have a look at this. The first instruction here is our LDX. Load X register width. X register width 0. You can see the zero address is given at 1029, correct? Instruction minomic is LDX address is 1029. Now see what happens. Yeah, LDX is the instruction zero. Hexadecimal of code of LDX is zero. I am not telling, you can refer that particular table which has been sent to you. Yeah, keep it as a reference. That is mandatory printed for all other uh, assembling what we'll be doing further, right? So we know that uh, SIC has got format three instructions. Yeah, one second. Uh, LDX 0, opcode of LDX is 0, 04, and then uh, address of 0 is 102. So, when it is a uh, format 3 instruction, it is a 24 bit instruction, 8 bit for opcode, and then uh, uh, X bit is uh, index bit, and rest 15 bits is for the address. So, for that reason, you can see 0, 0, 0, 0, that is 0, 4, 0, 1, 0, 0. This is for opcode. It is not an index addressing. So 0 in the X field and 1029. 1001, 15 bits is there. So we don't have 16 bits, that's why. Uh, 100000, that is 00102, 1001 is 9. So your opcode is calculated 041029 XR. So this is what is the first instruction got converted in pass two. Fine. Okay. We are running out of the time. Uh, okay. So rest of this one will going to continue. Means this program will continue assembly. In the next class also will be going for the SIC XC specific features that is format 3 addressing uh, format 4 addressing and all in the consecutive classes right so your examination you will be given a code like this not exactly need to have a complete program or maybe a complete program and part of a course snippet might be given and you are asked to convert it into object code this is what is the thing right or else you may be given one instruction something like uh, three, third instruction, 1003, in loop, PD, in device, convert it into object code. Only one, only one is given. Yes, like that way, they may ask you for implementation. And the important thing is, if at all, this theoretical question is asked, you will be getting algorithm, write an algorithm for first pass of two passes. Sure. These are some of the important things, takeaways from the class. So, we shall end the meeting. Thank you. Thank you for joining.